Good afternoon, students. Last week we discussed the Ghana Stock Exchange. Of which we talked, we discussed what the stock exchange is, the evolution of the Ghana Stock Exchange, and then the functions. Today we are going to continue with it with the buy and sell of securities. As I told you, the buy and sell of securities, we discussed the securities. Of which we got to know the securities market. So today, by the end of the lesson, we should be able to explain the stock exchange market, list the dealers at the stock exchange, and then explain at least five stock exchange of terms. Buying and selling securities, a highly organized market. Like I said the other day, securities are shares, bonds, debentures, and, and stocks. These are the securities, and we do sell them at the Ghana Stock Exchange market. The market, as you see there, is not an ordinary market where we sell tomatoes, cassava, and the rest, but we sell shares. We said a share is once right ownership of what? Of a company. When you invest your money in a company, you become a shareholder. So it is not for an individual. Shares are for a company. So you become a part ownership of that company. And then we discuss, we said stock. Stocks are when shares are consolidated into one block. We say we have what? A stock and then a debenture. A debenture is a written acknowledgement. It is a written acknowledgement of a company to its own loan creditors. Buy and sell of securities. Price of security on the stock exchange, as in other free markets, are determined by supply and demand. When more people want to buy than to sell shares in a particular company, the price of shares will rise. Like some of uh, those of you who do economics, you know when price of commodities uh, rises, demand will hurt. But when shares uh, the, the price of those commodities are low, demand will be higher. When people want to sell than to buy, the price will hurt or fall. They want to sell than to buy because uh, there's no more money in the system. For that matter, they cannot buy more. Increasingly, computers are used in buying and selling shares. These days, we are in the modern world as technology is changing things. These days, that you go there to buy, now you can just buy shares on the net. This means that the process can be carried out quickly. The investor who wishes to purchase, the investor is the one who is investing his money, the capital, into the company. So when you buy shares, you are an investor. The investor who purchases stocks or shares must approach a stock broker who will undertake the purchase for him. So individuals do, don't deal with the stock exchange. You deal with the brokers. So somebody will say, we call them the middlemen or agents. You cannot go there as an individual. When you want to buy or purchase shares, you have to see the, the brokers. A stock broker who will undertake the purchase for, for him. The stock exchange is another type of a highly organized market. All experts who deal on such markets for the ordinary member of the public will not know them how to follow and would also and would almost certainly make a bad bargain. Only the experts who experience sorry, only the experts with experience of the market can judge what is a fair price for a share. And the experts that we are talking about are the jobbers and the brokers. They are the experts at the Ghana Stock Exchange market. So when you want to purchase share or any stock, you have to contact them and they will determine if the price of that shares are fair or not, so that they will not allow you to uh, buy anything anyhow without making a profit. Because uh, the aim of 
business a businessman is to maximize profit so when you invest your money into a company or even into any business you have to get returns which is is the profit so the experts will advise you before you go into buy or purchase the shares there are two classes of experts brokers and jobbers who are also known as the dealers broker who is a broker the broker buys and sells shares on behalf of the general public deal on his own account when acting for the public he is an agent employed to buy at the most favorable price obtainable so the two classes of the experts are the brokers and the jobbers like i said the brokers are those who are into contact with the public so as an individual who you want to buy shares or purchase shares you have to see the the broker for him to advise you as to how much a share co uh, cost so that you buy like i said you buy at a favorable or, or a fair price so that nobody will there will not be any forward one man to cheat you brokers are paid by their clients according to a fixed scale of charges yes they charge and they are, they are also into business they will not help you without getting anything so they will charge you brokers also give their clients advice in connection with investment affairs they are forbidden to advertise brokers don't advertise you go there they, they don't have to come out publicly to advertise no you have to you have to go there as an individual you have to go there to find out so they will advise you on how to invest your money into a business brokers execute their clients orders by dealing with jobbers the jobber is a wholesaler of stocks and shares so the broker like i said deals with the public jobbers also deal with the brokers Jobbers buy in stock. They buy and keep them. So the brokers buy from the jobbers, and the jobbers, uh, the, the brokers will also sell to the public. A broker wishing to sell them at a fair price to the jobber, who will add them to his store of securities. A broker wishing to buy shares on behalf of a client will obtain them from the jobber at a fair price. So, like I said, the jobbers buy them. To like when you get to marketing, you get to know more of that marketing. You have the retailer, the wholesaler, and then the producers. The wholesalers go to the producers, buy them. The retailers will also go to the wholesalers to buy, and then to the final consumer. It is the same thing. Job. A jobber is someone who specializes in a particular type of shares and stocks. He acts as a wholesaler or middleman. The, the jobber acts as a wholesaler or so a wholesaler or the middleman. He buys in bulk, stores them or keep them for the job brokers to go there and buy and sell them to the general public. So the brokers are in contact with the individuals. You cannot an individual cannot go to the stock exchange market like I said to buy. You have to see the, the broker. And even the broker will also buy from the jobber before it gets to the final uh, uh, client or the, the consumer. In practice, he deals with the brokers and has direct contact with the public. Usually, when a broker is requested to buy or sell securities, he approaches a jobber and ask for his price for a particular share without saying whether he wants to sell or buy. The jobber then quotes two prices. The jobber buys for the brokers go to the jobbers to buy before it gets to an individual, the general public. One, the price at which he is willing to buy. The price at which he is willing to sell. The first one is the price at which the, the jobber is willing to buy 
and then the price at which he is willing to to sell them. These are the two prices that you put. The difference between a jobless buying and selling price is jobless term or his profit. So when a jobber sells to the brokers, at least he is also into business and they are doing business. And every businessman's aim is to maximize profit. He has to get profit. So he will sell so that he will also get something for his pocket. So whatever the jobber gets as his profit, you, you term it as a jobless term or profit. The stock exchange zoo. The stock exchange zoo. Not the ordinary zoo that we see, but there are some people who, who also deal with the stock exchange. Apart from the brokers and the jobbers, we have other people. We have the bulls, the bears, and the stacks. The bull. There are only two classes of members on the stock exchange. Brokers act for the general public or for the institutional buyers and sellers. Jobbers act for themselves, buying shares when they appear to be bargains about and selling shares when it appears likely that they will fall in price. Outsiders may also act. Outsiders, outsiders may also act in this way. And anyone who does so is said to be a speculator. Is said to be a speculator. Yes, those people, the good, the best, and stars, we call them speculators. Uh, to speculate is to let one's mind wander around the situation, trying to predict what will happen. That is speculators. So these people who do at the stock exchange, they buy. They buy. When the price falls, they will buy. So when the price was, uh, rises, they will sell and then do that. They will get profit out of it. So we call them speculators. As to whether the price will rise or fall, they anticipate. A speculator is a person who backs the judgment he makes about likely development by buying and selling shares or other variable commodities. The chief of varieties of speculators in the stock exchange are the bulls, bears, and stocks. Bull. Who is a bull? Or what is a bull? Bulls are speculators who take an optimistic view. For them, they are very sure that prices of commodity uh, shares will rise. So now they will buy. They are not afraid for them. They are always very sure that price of uh, shares will rise. So they will buy. At, see, they are they are hot. Optimist, they have optimistic view of business trends. When the market is bullish, the dealers are expecting price to rise. In these circumstances, it is a good thing to hold securities because if the prices rise, one will be able to get more for them. Booth therefore steps in and buy even if they have no money. Since dealings are usually not for cash, but for account payable at the end of the accounting period, a bull who buys now and sells before settlement day will not need to provide money, but will collect a profit on the shares he bought, low and sold higher. If the unexpected price fails to rise, the bull may find himself having to sell at a loss of, for the shares and hold them over to the next accounting period. What we are seeing here is that bulls are optimistic. No matter how much the price will rise or fall for them, they will buy. They always anticipate that, that's why we call them optimistic. They always anticipate that prices of shares will rise. So they will buy and keep them. So when prices rise, they will sell to get more profits. That's why we call them optimistic. They are very sure. For them, they are very sure. Always they anticipate that prices of those shares will rise. And for that matter, they will buy now. And sell at a later date. So when the price rise, then profits they will get profit. When it falls, it means that they will, they have to sell uh, at a loss. Yes. 
they will have to sell at a loss. That's why <laughs> businesses is profit and loss. It's profit and loss. So when we are doing business, you know that by all means, not all that uh, not all day that things will go well with you. Sometimes you will run at a loss. Sometimes to so that's why when you are doing entrepreneur, they, they are rich at best, but then you don't fear risk. Yeah. Always when you fear risk, you cannot be a businessman. No. It is profit and loss. And when you gain, that that is all. So that is the the, the, the guru for you. They are optimistic. They're a stable. Who is a stable? Someone or somebody who bought shares in the hope of a price rise had not seen that rise and is tired of holding them. He buys now, thinking that the price will rise. For some years or months, still, prices are not rising. So he's, he's tired of holding them. Those are those people we call a stable. They will buy, thinking that the price of those commodities or shares, and I talk of commodity, I'm talking of shares, uh, stocks, debentures, and bonds. They are commodities because they are being sold at the stock exchange market. For them, when they buy and then the price are not rising, they, they are they are uh, <coughs> tired of holding them. Okay. Then the bear or bears, they are pessimistic. They fear risk. For them, they will not buy. Thinking that the price will fall, so they, they will not buy at all. And if you are the type, you cannot do business. Pessimistic. Bears are pessimistic speculators who expect a fall in share prices. They therefore sell any shares they have now. Thinking that the price will still decline. They have shares with them. They were thinking that the price of those commodities will rise so that they, they sell for a profit. But because they are pessimistic, for them, they, 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 uh, they fear to lose. So they, they will sell the share they have now. They therefore sell any share they have now, and even shares they do not have because of prices fall as expected. The shares will be available in a, a few hours or a few days at lower prices than at present. The speculator backs his judgment, but he needs to be worthy if he is going to weather the storms when his expectations are disappointed. That the bear. For them, though the difference between a bear and a bull is what? The, the bull is optimistic. For the bulls, they, they know that by all means the price of those commodities that the shares price of the shares will rise so that they will sell to get more profit. But the, the bears are pes uh, pessimistic. For them, they, they, they fear risk. They fear risk. So, thinking that the price will, will not rise, price will even still decline. For that matter, they will sell whatever share they have at hand and then get whatever they need. Then it starts. It starts, in not stages, it starts. That way it starts, not stages. S T A G G S. So do that operation. Starts. S T A G G S. Starts. Starts are speculators who operate in the new issues market rather than the stock exchange. Although they might use the stock exchange before they realize any profits. What the start does is to apply for shares that are just being issued and are likely to be overscribed. He does not want to keep the shares or invest in the company that is issuing them, but simply to make a profit out of the issue. So they also pay at the stock exchange. But they, what they do is that they are speculators who operate in the new issues. New issues in the sense that when somebody comes in to buy or to sell shares, they will buy. You have to see the, the start. When you want to sell your share, you see them do that, they will sell it for you. Then stop exchange T. 
tax. We have an account. The period during which didn't take place before a recording is made and securities transfer for payment to their new owner. They are usually to text fortnightly accounts and to text weekly accounts. That way is not 23, it's to text fortnightly account and to text week, weekly accounts. Yes. So the period within which you buy and sell is what we term as the accounts. The period during which dealing take place. Then backwardation. A charge made to a bear for the use of shares to enable him escape from his unsatisfactory position by carrying his debt for shares he is unable to buy at present and it is carried over to the next account. As you mean you have shares to buy but you don't have money to or you have shares to sell. Now, the shares will be carried on to the next year or the, the next month. That is backwardation. Backwardation. A child made to a bear for the use of shares to enable him escape from his unsatisfactory position. That is by carrying his debts for shares he is unable to buy. The term as what? Backwardation. Then we have bonus issue. Bonus. Bonus always here. Bonus, bonus. It moves everywhere. It moves everywhere. Bonus. An extra share issued to existing shareholders to capitalize reserve which have been built up over the years. It does not mean the shareholder is better off, but the capital structure is not regularized. That is bonus issue. It is an extra share that has been. Uh, issue to the shareholders to capitalize on their reserves. So, extra shares. Maybe we bought some shares and then the extra one nobody is coming to buy. So, it becomes bonus to the shareholders. Then, gifts. What is a gift? They represent money borrowed by a government. See, the government also goes to the stock exchange to borrow. Yes, stock exchange. It's more or less like a banking institution. The government goes there. Then an individual. Also, it becomes savings. When you invest your money into a company, it, is, it means that you have invested. And for that matter, you have money over there. So when the unexpected happens, you can even go there to withdraw. So it is like a banking institution where we save. The government goes there to money for investment at which it, it pays a fixed rate of what interest the, the loan or the, the money given to the government will pay a fixed rate of interest on them that if she is to pay uh, 5 50 percent on whatever money you, you take you pay you pay 50 percent yield as he pays them to the but gates are sometimes described as long gates. You have long gates, which means they have long life. And maybe redeem after 15 years. Yes. The girls or the money borrowed to the government, it pays them. It's a, it's a long term, it's like a mortgage. It's, it's like a mortgage debenture, a long term loan given to the government or an individual. That one is a, a long a longer term gift and then we have that of what five years which is the short term the rate of interest is fixed and the same amount is paid out each year for the duration of the gift so if you are supposed to pay a yearly thousand Ghana cities plus interest you pay thousand till you finish paying that the duration of the then we have a takeover paid an offer addressed to the shareholders of a company by an individual or firm to buy their shares at a name price above the present market price with a view to securing control of the company. So that is the takeover bid. Buy them at more. An offer addressed to the shareholders of a company by an individual or firm to buy their shares at a name price above the present 
Christ is the take over of it. They're issuing house, a banking house specializing in launching new issues of stocks and shares. I said we have new issues. New issues are new shares that we, we sell them. People coming into the stock exchange market to buy or sell. Then contango. An amount paid by booze. And who are the booze? I said the booze are the uh, optimistic people who buy, who anticipate the price of those commodities will rise and then for them they still wait till the price rises before they they sell their shares for a profit. An amount paid by the booze who wish to carry the purchase of shares over to the next account because the rise they hope for has not materialized. Has not materialized. So that is all for today. That is all for today. In our next meeting, we will discuss uh, the government revenue, that is taxation and the rest. So we call it a day. Good afternoon. So, uh, question four. We have to solve for x in eight exponent two x minus three equals one on sixteen or exponent x minus two. So let's look at how you solve this question. Now we need to make the eight and the one on sixteen to get a common base. Now we know that. Uh, we have 16, there's someone who will say that uh, 16 is a multiple of 8. So the person might write 8 times 2, no, to give us the 16. Or someone might write 8 squared. Now 8 squared is not 16, because we are dealing with indices, so powers or exponents. Okay, so now this can be written as the 8 is written as 2 exponent 3. That is just for the 8. Now you have an exponent of 2x minus 3. So this will give us, now this can also be written as 16 exponent negative 1, negative index. Then we have x minus 2. So the 16 can also be broken down as 2 exponent 4. Then we have exponent negative 1 here. Then x minus 2. Because 2 exponent 4 give us 16, but then it is exponent negative 1. We have a negative 1 here. So now we need to multiply the brackets inside first. So we write this as 2 exponent negative 4. Then we have um, x minus 2. So now we can bring this expression here 2 exponent 3, then 2x minus 3. So a number in index form raised to another exponent, the exponents are multiplied. So we write this as 2 exponent 3 out 2x minus 3 in one bracket equals 2 exponent negative 4 out x minus 2 in a bracket. So the bases are still the same. So we can simply equate the exponent. So we equate the exponent as 3 out 2x minus 3 equals minus 4x minus 2 because the exponents are the same. So we just need to equate the, uh, the bases are the same rather. So we need to equate the exponents. So we can now multiply through. So 3 times 2x will give us 6x minus 3 times 3 is 9 equals negative 4 times x, negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2 give us positive 8 then we can go ahead and solve this question by grouping like things. So let's group like things here. We can have 6x, now negative 4x. So we bring the negative 4x here, that is we add 4x to both sides. This is equal to 8. This is negative 9, so we add 9 to both sides. So 6x plus 4x will give us 10x. This will give us now 8 plus um, 9 will give us uh, 17. So to find the value of x, we need to divide both sides by 
the coefficient of x, which is 10. So we have 10x on 10, 17 on 10. Now else we give us 17 on 10. So there is the solution to our last but one question. Then we will move on to our final question for the day. So this is our last question for yes. the day. So let's look at how we solve this question. So solve the question, um, solve the equation. 5 exponent x minus 5 root x equals 1 over 6 to 5. So we can rewrite the 6 to 5 as we have 5 exponent x minus 5 root x equals 6 to 5 exponent negative 1. Now the 6 to 5 is the same as uh, 5 exponent. The 6 to 5 the same as 5 exponent 4. So we can write this as 5 exponent 4, then exponent negative 1 here. Now this is also the same as 5 exponent x minus 5 root x. So simplifying the term over here, we have 5 exponents negative 4 because positive 4 times negative 1 will give us negative 4. And then we have 5 exponent x minus 5 root x. Now here we can state that the bases are the same, so we equate the exponents. So we write this as x minus 5 root x equals minus 4. And then we solve this question. Now, because we have a square root here, to take away the square root, we need to square both sides. Now, we have x, we also have x here, so if we decide to square both sides, as it is right now, uh, it is going to give us uh, problems, it's, it's tedious, solving such questions. So, what we need to do is we can isolate the 5 root x to one side, so that we can square and eliminate the root x. So, when we isolate the 5 root x, that is, we want the 5 root x to be on one side. So we can write this as 10 we have 2 here so 2 times the 4 times this x so this the sign here is positive so positive the sign here is always positive this I will square let's go right once again now to square a number in brackets or a binomial let me use the term a binomial now we take the first number then we square now the sign here is always positive. We take the last number, then we square. Now the sign here depends on the sign over here. So if we have a negative here, this sign becomes negative. When we have a positive, it also becomes that one. So we have a positive 4 here. Then now 2 times 4 times x. So 2 times 4 times our x. Now this is also the same as now 5 squared. So we have 5 squared. 
times root x all squared. To simplify this, we have x squared plus 2 times 4 will give us 8x plus 16. Now this will give us 5 squared is 25 times this that cancels out. Then we have x here. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 25x. Now we can uh, rearrange them. This is a quadratic equation, so we can rearrange them so that we get x squared plus 8x minus 25x plus 16 equals 0. So we have 8x, we have minus 25x, so we can subtract so that we get x squared minus 17x plus 16 equals 0. So this is our quadratic equation. You know how to solve quadratic equations. You have your rows tight. Um, Gross ways of solving. You can either complete the square, you can uh, factorize, you can use the graphical method or uh, any other method. So, or the almighty formula as students normally refer to it. So, now the coefficient of x squared here is 1. So, 1 times the number here is 16. So, we have 1 times 16 will give us 16. Then we find the factor pair, the factor pair of 16. That will give us negative 17. So we can write the factors of 16. We can have 16 and 1 because 16 times 1 will give us 16. We can also have negative 16 and negative 1. Negative 16 times negative 16 will also give us positive 16. We can have 8 times 2. 8 times 2 will give us 16. We can also have negative 8 times negative 2 will also give us 16. We can also have um, 4 times 4 or negative 4 times negative 4 also giving us 16. So we ask ourselves which of this uh, factor pair will sum up to 17? We know that will sum up to negative 17. We know that 16 plus 1 will give us 17 but it's uh, positive 17 but now we have negative 17. So this cannot be used. Now negative 16 plus negative 1 will give us negative 17 as we have over here. So now we are going to rewrite this expression or equation. In place of the negative 17x, then we bring the negative 16, negative 1, which is written as x squared minus 1x minus 16x plus 16 equals 0. Because minus 1x minus 16x will give us minus 17x. They are now 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 terms, so we can group them. We take the first two, we take the last two. We're taking the first two, we have x squared minus 1x, or simply x. Then negative out, we have 16x. Since the negative, it, we have factored negative out, it affects the sign over here. So it turns to negative. We have x, we have x, so x comes out, or we factor x out. We are left with x minus 1. Then negative 16, 16, so 16 is out. We are left with x minus 1, equals 0. Now we have x minus 1, we have x minus 1. So what we do is, we need to factor x minus 1 out. Not that there are two, we are writing one, no. We don't write one x minus 1, x minus 1. So we factor x minus 1 out. Here we had x squared, x squared. x squared, x. We factored x out. So once we have x minus 1, x minus 1, we factor x minus 1 out. So we write x minus 1 out. Now we are left with x here. Then minus 16 equals 0. Now we use the zero property principle. Pair two numbers have been multiplied. They are put out as 0. So it is that the first number is 0. So either x minus 1 equals 0 or x minus 16 equals 0. Then we solve. So for the first one, uh, x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to positive 1. Or x minus 16 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 16. So um, there is the solution to our last but not least question. So x is equal to 1. Uh, x is equal to 16. Okay, so let's write these questions for uh, our as our assignment.
Okay, so we have these two questions on the board as our assignment. So uh, in our next lesson, we shall be looking at how to solve all these questions. So make sure you solve the questions and present them for our next meeting. So then we just compare answers. But then we pay much, um, much attention to uh, question two, where we solve um, simultaneous equations, which involves um, exponents. So for our next meeting, we shall pay much attention to such uh, questions. Okay, so it's uh, bye bye for now. We'll meet again next time.